My name is Jeff Shapiro. I'm the director of MIT's Research Laboratory of Electronics, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today to a special RLE seminar. Our speaker is Professor Peter Hegelstein. Peter had uh, his undergraduate graduate education here at MIT. Uh, he did a doctoral thesis on the design of short wavelength lasers, and then went on to the Lawrence Livermore Laboratory, where he did some very fundamental work leading to X-ray laser operation. And we turn to the MIT faculty, where he's worked on a variety of issues, including uh, quantum soliton propagation and fiber, and recently work on a new approach to uh, uh, thermionic uh, electric power generation. And he's also spent a great deal of time worrying about anomalous effects in metal deuterides. And it's this latter topic that he's going to speak to us today about. Peter. Uh, I gave this talk at uh, Berkeley on uh, invitation from the Nuclear Engineering Department uh, September 30th. And uh, there were some hard-nosed senior folks from the physics department uh, there, uh, nuclear types. And uh, they seemed to be pleased with it. And I thought, wow, that's <laughs> odd. <laughs> so I, I thought I'd uh, give a version of the same talk here uh, at MIT in part for some of my friends and colleagues who have been curious about what I've been up to all this time. And I thought, well, you have gotten to the point where I think I know something, so raise the flag and see who salutes. Um, in 1989, as many of us uh, remember, the announcement of uh, some effects, uh, an excess heat effect uh, in blatant electrolysis, and what a level DD fusion from titanium uh, uh, cathodes. Um, these claims were uh, rejected uh, in short order. Um, the technical reasons for it, one is that screening was uh, insufficient to allow two deuterons to get together in order to fuse, even at the rate which uh, Jones claimed that he saw fusion neutrons uh, from. In addition, if there's uh, for the excess heat claim, if there was going to be any new reaction, it would have to be faster than the normal uh, DD fusion reactions, which happen as fast as they can. Two deuterons come together. The final state products leave about as fast as nuclei with that much energy uh, are capable of moving. And it was thought that, that, uh, that there couldn't be anything that could happen faster than that, because that would have to apply things for moving much faster than laws of physics would allow. In addition, uh, normally exothermic nuclear reactions give energetic particles out as final products. The uh, primary claim that Fleischmann made was that he was getting energy without uh, energetic uh, particles. The uh, basic claims are inconsistent with, or are inconsistent with the main body of nuclear physics and has accumulated over 60 years. In addition, there was uh, difficulties uh, replicating the experiment with other laboratories. <coughs> um, the, the arguments against this were not convincing to everybody. Uh, initially, perhaps 500 or 1,000 scientists worldwide kept on working. Some of the reasons that the uh, arguments weren't convincing was given that the most important claim was heat without energetic reaction products. Um, the, one of the primary criticisms of the uh, claims was that there was heat without reaction products. And uh, that's, that's unsettling. I mean, if, if the, the fundamental claim implies a new mechanism, then the discussion should concern the new mechanism rather than uh, the absence of reaction products. Um, another uh, fundamental reason for rejection was the notion that there is no possibility that you could have physical processes to work that way. And yet the, the arguments that were given as to why there could be no uh, reaction processes that work that way, uh, there was no proof of any sort. It was, uh, it was given as an assertion. So that sort of means that you can find reaction uh, mechanisms that work that way. And that invalidates uh, the primary criticisms as to why these things should be rejected and so forth. Reproducibility issues often have to do with how well you know what you're doing in the lab. And dismissal 
prior to clarification experimentally and experimentally didn't, didn't seem to me quite to be appropriate. Before 1989, the question of motivation, why would someone perform such experiments in the first place? A lot was said in 1989. Everybody remembers what was said. Uh, I spent some time, I cornered uh, Fleischmann. I said, well, why in the world did you do these experiments in the first place? And what uh, Fleischmann says was that in the uh, 60s, uh, or actually he said that electric chemists have long been aware of uh, problems with the calorimetry of a palladium deuteride palladium hydride. And the issue is, is that when people would do calorimetry on palladium hydride, uh, typically the accuracy could be very high, a tenth of a percent or thereabouts, and it would work every single time. However, when the same electric chemists would do calorimetry on palladium deuteride, there would inevitably be um, small discrepancies in the calorimetry, small being a number of a percent or two. And uh, typically, it, it would be in excess. So Fleischmann argued that, that um, the electrochemical community had long known that there were difficulties uh, in palladium deuteride versus palladium hydride. Now, the electrochemists I talked to weren't, it wasn't well known to them, but presumably there existed some electrochemists somewhere that it was well known to. So as a result, the, uh, if, we, if, if this is actually right, because Fleischmann says one thing one day and another thing another day, so one can never know, but uh, perhaps this makes things more understandable, but the initial Hans Fleischmann attempt might be viewed as uh, an effort to follow up on some uh, subtle uh, calorimetric effect that had been observed previously, uh, as opposed to the uh, in Fleischmann's uh, rationalization, his attempt to come up with a theory, which at the time was that so many deuterons were going to last, they were being crushed uh, at a density more than, than uh, that at the center of the sun. 2002, 13 years later, we've got a uh, different situation. Several hundred scientists continue uh, even, or several hundred scientists initially continued looking at the problem. There's about 150 left total worldwide uh, in this day and age. Supports problematic for most. Uh, there's been nine international conferences. Roughly 3,000 manuscripts have been written. Um, I will be the first to admit that of all these 3,000 manuscripts, not, not all of them are openly helpful. There are some publications in referee journals. The most important work <coughs> appears in the conference proceedings for these conferences. And this work is being done uh, against the uh, most severe opposition of the scientific community. And that translates into, uh, into if you work on it, your career doesn't advance, your papers don't get accepted, and, and you don't get funded. Um, there has been some clarification uh, over the years. There's been replication of the excess heat effect many times in, in laboratories. There's been experimental response to uh, most of the criticisms raised in, in 1989. Uh, excess heat with closed cell calorimetry has been observed in excess of 50 sigma. Uh, improvement reproducible reproducibility anomalies. Um, some of the anomalies can be observed at the 50% reproducibility level or so in, in, in the best of uh, cases. There's now been a detection of the ash associated with the excess heat, or at least a claim for the detection of the ash. And there's a new set of uh, anomalies as well. Um, one of the uh, claims is for DD fusion products coming out of uh, metal deuterides, including protons, tritons, neutrons, and uh, helium-3. It's my 3D graphics rendering of it uh, pictorially. Some of the other uh, reaction products, uh, alpha particles have been claimed to have been observed up to 21 in the heat, and uh, that's not an easy thing to have happen. Uh, tritons, gammas, uh, mass 2, 3 ejecta of 1 to 6 kilovolts, and the gammas, enough gammas came out of an experiment uh, in Italy for uh, Gossi's team to image his uh, cells through metal at uh, meters. Um, 